This is an incredibly prescient comment because, yes, we've covered that Corvold is a bastard, but he's more than that. He is a bastard with range. There are three primary ways to play Corvold, but I like to think of them as two camps, Control Corvold and Turbo Corvold. Get segued on. What I call Control Corvold is the classic creature-based aristocrats deck that I talked about in the roast. You're going to have stuff that gives you benefits when your creatures die. You're going to have ways to kill those poor suckers in a back alleyway. And you're going to have ways to make more expendable lackeys. These decks are very good if you want to be able to deal with enemy creature-based board states. The token generation that you have is going to give you chump blockers that you can sacrifice for benefits if people try to swing at you, and you can also use cards like Plague Crafter or Dictate of Erebos to make everybody suffer together. But trades like those, you always come out on top of, because you are sacrificing literal garbage to get counters and card draw, whereas they are sacrificing their firstborn child, and all they get out of it is yet another reason to not remember your birthday. The weakness of these types of decks is that if any links in the chain fail, it gets very sad very quickly. If you can't protect your sacrifice tools, you don't hold on to your really good death triggers. If your opponent's board states either don't care about creatures or also have expendable lackeys, Corvold's destructive rampage becomes more of a menacing waddle. And that brings us to Turbo Corvold. This can be done with either lands or treasures. These decks are far more resilient, and they focus less on interacting with individual board states and more on taking big, big turns that will leave the entire table questioning both the nature of their reality and their willingness to speak to you. Since treasures can inherently be sacrificed as part of the card, that means you never have to protect anything else to cash out in your combo at instant speed, which is incredibly important. If anybody ever comes for Corvold, you can pop them one at a time to dig for answers, or if anybody tries to wipe the board of artifacts, for instance, you can just pop them all, and then now you have six cards, and nobody else has artifacts, and now who looks stupid? Them. There are cards like Mayhem Devil that will let you ping along the way with these strategies, but normally the payoff you're looking for is stockpile treasures into a big mana win with like Torment of Hailfire, Finale of Devastation, or if all else fails, just pump Corvold or a creature like Jewelry to a bajillion and murder everybody by beating face. Now, in my opinion, Landsack has the distinction of being the most consistent to set up and the best for convincing the table that you are a psychopath because who sacrifices their goddamn lands? Where creature and treasure generation can be interrupted, people land for turn is always there. Green has so many cards that care about lands entering, lands leaving, lands just existing, that as soon as you can play multiple or sacrifice multiple in a turn, you quickly become a dirt-scented hurricane that nobody dares stand against. And fetch lands didn't need this. They didn't need to be better. They were already incredible. They didn't need this.